Do you want to farm 60k gems a month? I'm Shinchi42. Welcome to Rise of Kingdoms. <laughs> Yeah, I know, you want to spend your gems like this, but you don't really have a lot of gems. You want to play Card King, you want to play Wheel of Fortune, you even want to do it for the events where you have to spend 7k gems. And for the More Than Gems event, what if it's the More Than Gems event today and you don't have any gems? Then how can you participate in that event? Or if you want to upgrade your castle, and you need to start buying some books of covenant, but you need gems. Well, today we are going to help you how to gather 60,000 gems in a month, but you have to take this 3D principles, triple Ds is what we call it. What does this triple Ds mean? It means discipline, dedication, and determination. If you don't have these three, I don't think you can handle this. Now, if you guys haven't subscribed to our channel yet, don't forget to do so. I would love to have you guys here. Subscribe and turn that notification on. And if you actually find this video to be very helpful, it would be very nice for me if you smash that thumbs up. It would really help my videos. Now, we're going to talk about a few things in here. How to efficiently farm gems and also how is it not efficient to farm gems. Now, like I said, you have to have this triple D principles. If you don't have this triple D principles, you cannot do this. This is not for everybody. So it's really up for you if you are up for this challenge. Now, something that is very obvious to talk about is gathering gems in the open field, right on the map. Now, once you have unlocked this technology in your academy, jewelry, this will allow you to gather gems on the map. Now, once you have been gathering gems on the map, you want to be efficient. You don't want to waste your time. And I'm going to show you something right now that is a good example of wasting time. So I send out my gatherers here, for example, that they just finished gathering gems. Now, what I did is I started farming gems and I took a shower Then I came recording this video. Now, it took them a very long time to do so. This one is marching for six minutes and this one is marching for four minutes going back home. And as you can see, we have been gathering, you know, gems in here. How can we make it efficient? Well, there's a few things that we can do. Oh, by the way, I want to say this video is also inspired by Apostle of Christ. Now, what you can do is you can teleport into the zone one. The reason why you're considering to teleport in the lower zone is because this area is pretty much unmanned. And as you can see, as soon as we panned in here, there is a level one gem deposit already. And then there's another one. So once you have teleported in this area, what you need to do is you need to start saving these locations. How can you do that? Click the node or the resource point, click the star and put it into your favorite markers in here. So we're going to confirm that and we're going to confirm this. And what you can do is you can send out one gatherer in this area. Every time that they finish, you can just have to pan in and pan out and just pick resource node to just hop into. And like I said, this is going to take triple D principles. Determination, this means that you have to really look for these gem nodes. They're not that easy to find sometime. You have to take your time and find them. And then the second one is dedication. You have to be very dedicated on finding these. So as you can see, we found another one, right? And the third one is discipline. The reason why we mentioned about discipline is that you have to keep track of the time. So as you can see, when you pan into this commander pane in here, you can see the amount of time for the gatherer to finish. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? What that means to you is that you have to set up a timer when you're multitasking, when you're farming these gems, you have to have a timer. And once those timers pop, you have to move your troops. So what's inefficient that I'm talking about? The inefficient one I'm talking about is that when I was gathering right now, as you can see, we only send out the minimum amount of troops. As you can see, we only have 216k troops in here. What you can do is send a bigger batch of troops to bring bigger loads. So what should you be doing? You should be sending your troops. So what you should be doing is sending your troops on different areas of the different maps. And then what you should be doing is you should be saving them into your favorite. Now, I understand there are only three favorites that you can save. So you can always try. So what you can do is 
you can split them into two each. So what you can do is split two gatherers in one area. So you can say is that two on the north, two on the south, and then your last march could be on the east. So there should be two north, two south, and one east. And then you can save them on your markers. And that's going to save you a lot of time. So while they are gathering, what you should be doing is you need to be determined on looking for the gem nodes. So what's great with that, if you continually do this, in a day, you can gather approximately about 2,000 gems, and it's possible. You have to do this pretty much all day. In my opinion, you really, really have to have that discipline to do this. This is not an easy task. This is not for everyone, and I'm not saying that you can do it because if you don't have this triple D principle, then you cannot do this. It's not an easy thing. Even for me, it's a difficult thing to do because we have life outside of this game, right? But this is for those players who are very dedicated into the game that really, really wants to be efficient into the game. Now you're wondering, how the hell am I gonna get the other resources? Well, here's the thing. You can get all the other resources by having an alternate account, a farm account. Use them to gather resources. And you're gonna be saying like, oh man, since farm accounts, you know, the taxation is high, and every time I'm gonna send resources, I'm gonna be losing resources as well. Well, yes, but on the bright side of that, you're gonna have a lot of gems, and with a lot of gems, you can play with those Wheel of Fortune. You can get new commanders. Do you not want to have new commanders playing the Wheel of Fortune? Let me know, all right? And if you really wanna upgrade your castle, you really, really need to grind on getting those gems, especially if you are free to play, right? So, all right, so you guys see that we have a gem node right in front of us. What I can do is a very good example that I'm gonna show you is that you can see we can increase our load and we can just do that one. And then whenever it's about to finish, right? As an example in here, since I cannot show you the exact way we're gonna do it. So as you can see, it's about eight minutes in here. So around like 30 seconds before it ends, I need to be watching it. And then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be moving it and then marching towards to the next gem node. All right. So another key thing that is very important in here is that you really do need to work on your technology. So working on your technology, cutting and polishing is very important. So this is going to be when you're trying to get into T5 by then. Gem gathering speed is going to be increased by 35%. Now, should you worry about whoever goes farm your gem? Honestly, it doesn't matter. Just use the system recommendation to farm the gems. Because what you're going to be doing here is you're going to be using all your commanders, your gatherer commanders to farm gems. Now, um, another thing that I want to send a tip is that if you're really trying to be more efficient with moving speed and you really want to, you know, move around your commanders faster, you can start training T1, though. I don't really recommend having T1 in your city. I don't personally like it. I don't keep T1 siege in my city. The only T1 that you will see is from where I actually get it from the villages because I haven't finished my villages yet. Honestly, what you need to be doing as well is leveling up your gatherer commanders. All right, so what you need to do is increase your commander levels as well. Well, you're probably just saying that, oh, I need to only, you know, get like level 37 for my commanders because, you know, I get the maximum uh, with the gathering talent. Well, let me tell you this, you're wasting a lot of time as well. So what you really need to do is upgrade your commanders and increase anything that is going to add into marching speed. Increase marching speed of all units led by this commander by 9%. Increase marching speed of all units led by this commander by 6% and then increase marching speed of siege units by 30%. So what we're, the reason why we're doing this is that we're moving around and we want to reduce the marching speed to get to destination A to destination B. Now, I will tell you right now that I haven't improved everything in here that I am still working on it. Like this one, I could still improve it. I'm gonna be adding into the siege marching speed and I'm gonna be upgrading this one with three levels. As you can see, here we go. And what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be increasing this marching speed of siege units by 30%. There we go. Now there are more paths in here that you can add and you can do that whenever you wish to do so. So another thing that I wanna mention is that on your last march, if you do have to use a non-gathering commander, you can look at Dragon Lancer. So on your last march, if you want, you can even do a Cavs gathering units. Yes, Cavs, and you can move around a lot faster. 
Um, think about this one. You have increased gathering speed of troops by 15%. And you'll have all the moving speed. So imagine this. If I'm going to be gathering gem nodes, let's take a look. Let's go find a gem node real quick. So let's take a look in here. The marching speed is about nine minutes. Now, the key thing that I'm saying in here is that using the Dragon Lancer is going to be your last resort. If all your commanders are out there and are gathering already, what you can do is you can send Dragon Lancer because of the superior tool talent. And as you can see, if I increase the siege units in here about maybe... Uh, about 23k is about you know 1000 load but if you actually do this one where you put dragon lancer and let's just say you put you know for most people probably you will have um lancelot so let's take a look at lancelot in here i put lancelot in there if i put you know ballistas in here it would have 3000 load but what you can do what you can do is you have if you have a lot of t4 uh, knights that you're not using you can use these knights as well it would have 2000 loads and it will have you a good marching speed moving around in different areas now with this one you won't have as much of a faster gathering speed as compared to if you are using your actual gathering commanders so the reason why you're doing that is once you have filled out your four cues you can send that dragon lancer because of the versatility talent there is a superior tool marching speed is very crucial in here you don't want to waste so much time marching into one area and losing the amount of time farming time is very important time is money also have to understand the skills of the commander and when you are farming so for these two as you can see joan of arc and sarka whenever they gather gems they're actually getting extra bonus in here gathering speed increased by 25 percent what's great with joan of arc and sarka is that they can gather in any type of resources with this buff. So whenever you're going to be farming gems, right, you have to look at the commanders. And if you look into Sundiok and Cleopatra, they don't have any gathering speed for neutral resources. What I mean by neutral resources is like gems. Since they are mainly focused on specific resources, so for Sundiok, it's gold gathering. And for Cleopatra, it's stone gathering. You're mostly focused on with the gathering talent. So what's going to give you speed is not these four, right? What's going to give you speed is the superior tool. So you need to work on superior tool. And that's very important. If, and what's great about this one is that you actually get extra reward as well whenever you're gathering with this talent. All right. So for the next one that we have, we have Centurion which is going to increase troops gathering speed by 10%, which is going to work. It's going to improve our gathering for the gems. Now, the second gather that we have in here is Constance. It's not really going to improve or help any much with gathering. What's great about this one is that you can receive additional 10% resources upon completion. But really the best combination for gathering is Joan of Arc and Sarka for gem gathering. Here's another node. As you can see, now we have Gaius Marius and Dragon Lancer. There's really no value having Dragon Lancer in here because it's not going to increase any of the gathering. So what you can do is you can just remove that. Let Gaius Marius do it on his own and start gathering. Now, another commander that you can use, like I mentioned, is Dragon Lancer. But since I haven't really worked on my Ishida, well, I've been lazy and not worked on Ishida yet, which I am going to be starting to work on Ishida so that I don't have to use Dragon Lancer. Once you have Ishida worked out, it's a little bit expensive on Ishida. He wasn't really on my top priority when it comes to spending XP books or leveling up because whenever we were in KVK, I was focused on working on my fighters. Now, keep in mind, that I am not a free to play. <laughs> Even though I make jokes about it, I do spend money into the game and buy gems. So for me, it wasn't a priority. But to be efficient, you really do need to work on Ishida. So what I'm going to be doing on my goal is that we are going to be working on Ishida and getting him leveled up. Since it's the downtime, we have a lot of time to work on Ishida. For me, if you're in the situation that you don't have all the commanders right away for gathering, what you can do is the system is going to recommend you is Dragon Lancer. Now, it doesn't matter if I even put City Keeper in here and just you can gather here. But you can see that the marching speed is insanely going to take forever. What I can do is I'm going to put my Knights there and just a few knights in here and just to gather it you know 684 load and then when i'm done i can just move and gather this one before it goes home now another thing that you do as a rocker in here is that you need to be fighting the barbs or what you can do is doing some barbarian forts 
you have a lot of action point. You don't want it to be sitting around, right? So what you need to do is defeat barbs because you get a lot of gems by defeating barbs. Now for me, I wouldn't be really defeating a whole lot of barbs in the home kingdom. What I actually do is defeat barbs whenever I am in KVK. In the home kingdom, I normally do is defeating barbarian forts because in barbarian forts, you have the potential to gain key, you have the potential to gain gems, and then you're also helping out your alliance gifts level. And also you're getting more keys so that you can open the treasure in here. And of course you're getting all these resources and as well as AP. So you need to do all these things. It takes a lot of effort, dedication, determination, and discipline. So to me, I didn't have that much dedication. So if, I, if you're asking me if I do this every time, no. But I know this knowledge and I want to share it to you guys. It doesn't mean that I don't do this. I cannot share this information to you. And like I said, this is inspired by one of the rockers, Apostle of God, here in Rise of Kingdoms. So let's do a quick conclusion in here. Make sure that you are saving your gem deposits in here so that whenever you're done farming, you can just hover into the markers and then go into each deposits. Also have a timer is the second tip that we we'll want to give you here. And the third tip in here is to level up your commanders. Don't waste them. And um, I want to give you an example for earlier with some of the commanders. Remember, I have shown if you guys didn't catch it whenever we're trying to farm gems that we have put a secondary commander sometimes the secondary commander has no value let's say i'm going to be gathering gems right now this one has good value because we have a universal gathering speed now if i'm going to be using sun Diok in here there's really no value for me to use her as a secondary after i sent my joan of arc and sarka dispatch if i had for example earlier i don't know if anybody caught it if i had this combination the system recommends this to me. This is good value. Honestly, there's no value on this one. What I would do is I would remove that instead and I would use Cleopatra by herself to do the gathering because I can use that talent tree to work into my favor. All right? Now, if you're being lazy, that's okay. You can do that. But if you want to be efficient, you have to think about some situations in here. Not always that the system will recommend you the best. That's the key word here. I did mention that earlier, but I don't know if you guys caught it because I wanted to test you guys out if you guys are just going to listen to every single word that I'm going to say. You have to think about the situations in here, right? I have to explain some of the things in a little bit more detail if you didn't get them. But if some of you guys got them, let me know in the comment section below. And the fifth thing in here that we need to mention is that use your action point wisely gather gems through barbarians to barbarian forts you can do it and like i said you have to have the triple d principle to do this and keep in mind that this is not meant to be easy right nothing comes easy in life so with that being said if you can farm 2000 gems a day with the dedication that you got you really need to set timer and i think you can do it and i know some people can do it the matter of the question is can you do it do you have the time to do it right most of us have life outside the game most of us are probably not going to be able to do it but if you have the time to grind i think you can do it so if you gather 2000 gems a day for 30 days you will have 60,000 gems in one month it does take a while it may take the entire day it depends on how much time that you have into the game that you're going to give or maybe you can just gather a thousand gems a day you'll get 30,000 a month it all depends if you have the triple D principle. Anyway, rockers, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video is helpful. Hopefully you guys have learned some tips in here and hopefully you have seen some mistakes as well. We try to highlight them, point out some of the mistakes that we have in our account and type it down in the comment section below. If you guys haven't subscribed to our channel yet, don't forget to do so. We're here to show you everything from the right things to do, from the mistakes things to do so that you can know and you can prevent these mistakes and you can be better and successful as a true rocker. See you later.